So, uh, what's up to all of our friends on airliners.net? Enjoy the show. And we were the major Paul Max Moga, the F-22 demonstration pilot. How are you doing today? It's great to be uh, great to be with you. It's a wonderful day. Good show. All right. So, what are you going to do today in the sky over Miramar? We're going to put on about a 10 to 12 minute tactical demonstration uh, that will hopefully showcase to folks the capabilities of what is by far the world's most advanced combat aircraft. So, when you're in the sky, you know a handful of us have seen this demonstration, and it's awesome. It seems like the jet shouldn't be able to pull off those maneuvers. What are you doing in the sky to make the jet kind of flip over on itself? Well, you know, as a pilot, I'm, I'm manipulating the controls similar to any other aircraft. The, the, where we start separating ourselves from other traditional fighters is when I start getting the slow speeds and the high angles of attack where the computer and the flight control system of the jet actually is able to take over and do things that a regular pilot with only a stick, a rudder, and a, and a couple of throttles could not do. So you're actually just putting in inputs and the computer's kind of deciding for you what it, what it moves? Yeah, I, I, I basically request something to the flight control computer uh, with the stick, the throttle, uh, and, the, uh, and, and the rudder pedals. The computer processes what I'm asking the jet to do, and then it figures out the best way to aerodynamically achieve that result, which as a pilot, you only have those controls. Unless I was going to have nine or ten individual switches in the cockpit, I couldn't do what the computer does. Do you feel does. that that frees you up to think about other things as you're flying? Uh, no, I actually got my hands full. You know, anytime you fly a display at an air show, you have so much to be focused on, airspeed, altitude, crowd lines, uh, show center, all those kind of things. So I don't, I don't have a whole lot of extra time to be uh, goofing off and uh, doing other things. Tactically speaking, you know, we see you do some of these incredible maneuvers, especially the one where you're flying and it basically just flips over on itself. Would you ever actually use that maneuver in combat? And if so, what scenario would you do uh, that maneuver to avoid a target? Uh, well, it, it really depends. I think you're talking about the power loop or it's a yeah. very tight uh, radius loop at the top. Exactly. Uh, you know, that, that maneuver may or may not happen in a, in a, in a dogfight engagement, but what it does showcase is a capability of the jet where I have the ability to basically start a loop and double my altitude. Whereas if another jet did that, he would be well beneath me if he tried to follow me through it. And it also demonstrates the pitch capability of the jet where I can get my nose on anybody well before they can even get, think about getting their nose on me. So let's just say someone has targeted you and you're starting from a defensive position. What maneuver would you use? Something that the, you know, the audience would relate to to get away from that situation. Well, first I, can, I guess I can tell you that I've been flying this jet for four years and I have yet to be in an actual combat training scenario where anybody ended up uh, and and putting like me in a, in, a, in a defensive position. When we do do it in training and we purposely set it up that way, uh, normally we start off with a, a, a typical break turn to defeat any kind of missiles that are coming at us and then we try and turn the tides, go from defensive to neutral and then back to offensive and this jet can do it faster than anything else in the world. So, some it all up, you wouldn't be flying any other jet if you had your choice. I am happy where I'm at and I'm willing to bet my life on it. Awesome. Thank you so much.